sorry so role of soft tissue uh, release in tkr soft tissue release is the key to achieve balance in partly correctable and rigid deformities in tkr no sh release should be required where deformities varus or valgus are fully correctable uh, respective of severity and you just saw the example by dr rajkumar do not release the superficial medial collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament by default in spite of severe deformities as advocated in past and i'll show you the cases and the reason so we'll deal one by one various deformity these are the most common deformities that we come across and this is the algorithm that means you don't have to do all the steps you do one step and if it is enough to correct the deformity you stop there if not then you proceed to the next step so first of all you remove the medial osteophytes from tibia and femur then release of deep collateral is almost by default and even then you are not able to correct the virus then you release the posterior medial capsule it's not the collateral superficial collateral which is contracted but it's the posterior medial capsule and even if that is not enough then you do medial reduction osteotomy you just saw the uh, example and lastly the medial epicondyl osteotomy which is required very rarely especially for extra articular deformities so as you can see in this diagram and in mri the mcl is absolutely normal it's not contracted it is the tenting which is causing the stretching of the ligament and in this diagram as you can see it is the posterior medial capsule which is contracted which consists of the post uh, posterior oblique ligament and oblique popliteal ligament so you have to release them and i'll show you a short video how to do it so after making the box you get into the space by ex ex <clears throat> removing the fat from the intercondylar notch and then with osteotome and hyperflexing the knee under vision you cauterize the posterior capsule and then peel it off from the back of the femur so this is the technique if it is only a virus deformity you do posterior medial if it is a flexion deformity you go little bone laterally and if it is a valgus deformity you do it on lateral side and if you are not able to do with this the next is the which i said is usually required in both uh, both femur where you are trying to correct intraarticularly and then you fix it after cementing the components so these are the examples i am sure we all see pre op and post op so coming to the valgus deformity these are less common and are the most challenging to correct especially the rigid valgus deformity uh, with flexion deformity the algorithm for th these deformities is very similar you first remove the lateral osteophytes then release the arcuate ligament and it bend using cauchy at the level of tibial cut inside out technique popularized by dr ranawat and if that is not enough then you release the posterior lateral capsule in very similar way as i showed in earlier video and lastly uh, sliding lateral epicondylar osteotomy so again pictorial representation mri showing the lcl is not contracted it is the popliteal fib fibular ligament and arcuate ligament which are contracted but you although the <coughs> although superficial medial lateral collateral ligament don't contract but they do get stressed and sometimes you have to chest them and you may require sliding osteotomy to balance those and sometimes constant implant so this is one example severe valgus and flexion deformity uh, and here after under anesthesia she had this much uh, flexion and we had to do that sliding epicondylar osteotomy and after fixation of implant we fixed the osteotomy distally and slightly posteriorly and i do not try to correct this deformity on table because you can actually physically feel the pulsation disappearing so i put them on oscar section i do this for i have been doing this for a number of years and they gradually stretch out and then i put them in the plaster cylinder uh, this is again animated video showing how we do or how lateral epicondylar osteotomy is done and then you fix it with two screws 
So this is her pre-op gate and this is one month post-op. Inflection deformity, again, it is seen most commonly rheumatoid arthritis can be associated with varus knee in osteo and with valgus knee in rheumatoid arthritis. And <coughs> occasionally when you have a mismatch between flexion extension gap, you may have to do uh, release. Algorithm is same, remove all the osteophytes from the back of femur tibia, release capsule as I shown earlier. Uh, you may require extra uh, distal femur resection uh, like the case I'm just showing you. So here you can see in osteoarthritis, it's the osteophytes causing tenting. In rheumatoid, it's a true capsular contracture. So again, after uh, making the box, you release the posterior capsule, of, but do not go to the posterior lateral corner because you can damage the uh, lateral popliteal nerve. So stay uh, close, uh, stay away from the posterior lateral corner. This is a lady who has been on wheelchair for 30, 18 years, and this is the deformity, nearly 90 degrees after anesthesia. And this is after surgery, we couldn't correct fully. So again, I put her on oscalcis traction for a few days to stretch out their hamstring and then put them in plaster cylinder. And this no way affects their ultimate flexion. And these are her long leg films and pre and post-op X-ray. And this is her flexion, which is nearly 120. And this is a gait after three months. A lady who hasn't walked for 18 years. So in summary, judicious use of soft tissue release can give excellent release in all kinds of deformity, except in hyperextension, goes without saying. In some cases, one can get away with primary implants by doing a good soft tissue release. Otherwise, you may have to use so the typical example is valgus deformity, where you can balance by doing a lateral epicondyl osteotomy. And as I mentioned earlier, you need a stepwise approach. So if first step has corrected your deformity, you don't go to the second step. Complete correction of severe flexion and valgus deformity on timbal can be dangerous, as we know, can cause foot drop. Post-op skeletal traction is a very simple and very effective method, which I've been using for 30 years. Uh, and gradual correction, and sometimes if required, a plaster cylinder. Epicondylar osteotomy generally are rarely required. Usually these are cases with bow, t bow femur where you want to correct intraarticularly. Thank you for your kind listening.